So if you want proof that we're a posy bunch in the United Kingdom, it's that we buy more convertibles than any other nation in Europe. And that's despite, well, not having the best weather in Europe, far from it. However, it is spring now, it's almost summer. So we thought, why not assemble some of the best value used convertibles from the Cinch online showroom and see which are the best ones to buy for 2022 summer, starting with this lovely Mazda MX-5 here. This is a car you can get for not much more than £13,000. This is a proper, proper sports car. It might even be my favourite one here. We've started with a good one, but it's so back to basics. This is the 1.5 litre engine, but you can get a 2 litre engine with more power. Super lightweight, it weighs about as much as a shoe, or just over a tonne. And it is just proper old school sports car. It's just very simple. It feels light because it is light. But the best thing about this car, I think, is this manual folding roof, which goes up if your bicep's strong enough at any speed and in about two seconds. Isn't that just brilliant? Look at that Japanese simplicity. It works so well. No need for electric motors or anything like that. You can get a folding electric top, but that soft top does the job pretty well. But you've got storage space in the back here. The boot's not too bad either. And this car handles and feels very much like the Lotus Elan that inspired the MX-5, has always inspired the MX-5. It's light on its toes, very high revving. The two litre engine has over 180 horsepower, but this thing has just over 130, which is plenty for a car that weighs so little. And it's very exciting. It's rear wheel drive, and you get this lovely tactile six speed gearbox in all of the MX-5 models. Oh, and I love the functionality of the interior, like these vents here, which point directly at your hands. So if you're driving in the cold of winter, if you're as mad as that, you can still have the heat blowing directly onto your fingers. Genius. Right, what have we got next? Less of a sports car, more of a sensible way to go convertible driving is the Audi A3 Cabriolet. This is, well, it's a hatchback, a five-seat hatchback turned into a four-seater convertible. So that means it looks a bit like the normal A3. In fact, if you did that, it is basically just an A3, isn't it? However, this is the 35 TSI model, so it's quite nippy. It's the 1.5 litre engine. It's also quite fuel efficient. That Mazda does over 40 to the gallon easily because it's so light. This does it because it's got an efficient turbocharged engine. And of course, you get an Audi, which means you get a nice interior. Not massively exciting, but it looks good. I like the chrome effect vents that you get in Audis. This is a manual six speed gearbox car as well. So some sporting intent there, although it is front wheel drive, of course, but it handles okay. These things ride nice and softly. The interior is comfortable and you've got space for two people in the back. Not the most room in the world, but certainly you can get two teenagers in the back there. It's quite a little fun thing. And especially if you're the sort of person who just likes to get the roof down when you're driving to the shops or doing the school run. Great little option, this motor, and not much more than 20K. In fact, you can pick up diesel models, which of course are slightly less popular these days. They're under 20K, but you know, most people are gonna be going for this sort of one, aren't they? And it's good value money. Okay, and now we're entering slightly posher stuff because we have this lovely Mercedes C200 or C-Class Cabriolet, which they all came with AMG line trim, which means you get, for example, these lovely 19-inch alloy wheels, and it just looks that much more high-end because of the little details you get, chrome surrounds and the exhaust and the AMG line finish. This gray color is classic Mercedes. It just looks the part and it feels quite luxurious. Even when you have a smaller 1.5 litre petrol engine, again, well over 40 to the gallon on a run with one of these. So they're not that expensive to run and you can get them for under 30K now, which means you've got excellent value for money. You've got a boot just about big enough for a golf club box or pack or whatever they call it these days. I don't play golf, as you can probably tell. And an interior finished in proper Mercedes fashion. It's really lovely. It is soft touch leathers and some dark wood effect here, which I really like. And it just looks really nice against the chrome effect stuff here. Double screen, double digital screen, such comfortable seats. You just feel like you're in a high-end premium car because you are. Oh, and also I should say, when I press the engine start button, that this car, above all else, and more so than any other cars here, is the most hard top like when that roof is up because it comes lined with so much insulation material that basically, as far as you're concerned from in here, that's it on. Basically, it just sounds like you're in the hard top model because this stuff up here, I mean, it feels like I'm touching the mattress of a bed. It's so thick and insulated. So you've got maximum comfort, which obviously crosses over into how the car rides as well. These things are so nice and relaxing to drive. Automatic gearbox, easy to use. You feel pretty posh in one of these. I'm a big fan. But you needn't spend loads of money to access a car that makes you feel special. Case in point, 
the lovely and quite humble Mini Cooper Cabriolet we have over here, which you may have noticed comes on tiny little wheels. These are 15 inch wheels. It's because this is a classic model. I didn't know they still did 15 inch wheels on Coopers, but well, here they are. And I don't think it looks too bad for it because it just looks all the more cutesy, I think. But it is a proper Cooper model, which means the turbocharged 1.5 litre under the bonnet, they've all been 1.5 so far, that's just a coincidence. That has just over 130 horsepower, so it's pretty nippy, this car. And of course, being a Mini, you get all of the usual Mini trimmings inside, including an interior, which mixes retro design and chrome bits and funkiness all in with modern stuff so you've got your infotainment and digital sat nav in here even the graphics on mini system is quite unique and then you've got your big central speedo up here with a rev counter on the side it all just looks fun and funky and this car isn't an auto this one is a manual you can get an auto but i quite like the fact this is a manual it makes you feel like a proper cooper and these things go for well under 20 grand now and yet you've got a fun funky sporty mini in red with two stripes on the bonnet i'd add a set of fog lights to the front just because i want it to look like the full mini rally car package although it's a convertible so maybe i just look like a poser oh well not much space in the back for your mates i mean it is a pretty small car this mini it is a mini of course and the boot as well not exactly enormous but it's best to think of these as a two-seater with room to take your kids or if your mates want a short nip to the shops you've got space in the back for them there you can all go posing together but if posing's your thing we have the most posy car next it is the range rover evoke convertible which finished here in fake tan orange whatever you want to call it that's not the real name by the way but it's basically going to be that this car is well controversial to say the least some people love it some people aren't such big fans because it's an suv convertible and it's made by land rover which is just mad because land rover is supposed to be the rugged off-roader brand and yet here they are making a poser convertible but do you know what i hate to say i quite like it it's one of those cars where forevermore i think it will split opinions but in this shade of paint it's so unashamedly show off it's so unashamedly look at me i kind of forgive it for all of its brashness and let's face it it's still a land rover this one is the sd4 so it's a four-wheel drive diesel model Diesel's not the most fashionable thing these days but still loads of fuel efficiency on the motorway so if you do lots of miles this thing here will get you over 50 to the gallon it means you can race up and down the motorway or let's face it drive into the center of town so everyone can see you when you're driving around in your orange evoke it has two seats in the back as well so your mates can come along for the ride and these things are not much more than 30k so now they feel like pretty good value and because it is a land rover you do get proper four-wheel drive tech on this so if you wanted to go off road can't think of any scenario where you would in one of these but if you did at least you would know it can probably do a better job than anything else with a convertible roof certainly one that i care to think of anyway pretty good value then if you can get over the looks what do you think of it let us know in the comments because i'm sure it still divides quite a few opinions one car that won't be dividing opinions though i would like to guess is this lovely jaguar f-type made only down the road from that evoke but it couldn't be much more different, could it? Yeah, okay, it's still quite posy, but it's posy for all the right reasons, because the F-Type is still easily one of the best looking sports cars made. Inspired by the E-Type, which easily is one of the most beautiful sports cars ever made. So this thing has pretty good genes, I'd like to say. This is the pre-facelift model, so the front end on this doesn't have the slim headlights of the latest car, but I don't think that's any bad thing. It's almost a different model altogether and equally as pretty, I would argue. Now this is the checkered flag edition, which means it's got a two liter engine, but it has 300 horsepower. So it's really, really quite quick. In fact, it's rear wheel drive. And even though it's got an eight speed automatic gearbox, it's pretty engaging to drive this thing. And because it's a Jaguar, you get an interior centered around the driver because that's what matters in this thing. And oh, these seats are lovely. They're proper bucket seat aping sports seats and they really hug you nice and tight. And the driving position and everything is just spot on. Jaguar knows how to do this stuff. It gets it right in its saloons as well. And in the most sporting cars it does, like this F-Type, everything just feels absolutely spot on. I love the fact that you've still got some manual controls and the fact that there's still buttons to click and an exhaust button here. It's still quite tactile, but you do of course get your infotainment system as you need. But what matters most in this car is its balance. These F-Types were developed first and foremost with the convertible in mind. They obviously do do the coupe version, but they have excellent handling balance even with the removable top so you go around bends in this thing and it is so engaging and so entertaining to drive but so beautifully balanced more so i think than any other car here that mx5 is really nice to drive and really well balanced but this jaguar is just 
so, so, so very, very sweet. And it makes a decent sound for a four cylinder as well. The V6 sounds better, the V8 sounds better than that as well. But four cylinder sounds really good. And it means it's cheaper to run, cheaper to tax, and cheaper to buy, of course, as well. You can get these for not much more than 40K now, which is pretty, pretty good value for money. So this is elegant, but you don't need to be elegant in convertibles, do you? You don't need to be elegant in an F-Type because you can get a V6 and a V8. But if you're going to get a V8 convertible, it may as well be the big daddy of the lot, right? Which is why I'm about to show you our Ford Mustang V8 5-litre GT convertible. I said that all in the wrong order, but it doesn't matter. All of the detail is all to do with this V8 engine under the bonnet here. It has 416 horsepower and this thing is rear-wheel drive and it has a six-speed manual gearbox. You're controlling one of the most brutish sounding engines out there. Let's take a closer look at it, actually because it looks as good as it sounds. That is a proper V8 engine right there. There is a bit of engine cover going on, but otherwise it's just a great looking thing. And these V8s are, well, they're part of a dying breed, aren't they? And as much as petrol engines and everything's fading out, how long are these things gonna last for? I don't know, not long, right? Which means we should enjoy them, and that's why I absolutely love this Mustang. The convertible, like the coupe, isn't the sharpest tool in the box, but they do drive really nicely, these things. Big boot to go with that big engine and pretty spacious interior. I mean, Ford's interiors in the Mustang are really set for comfort, first and foremost. The seats are like armchairs and you sit nice and low in the car and everything feels quite muscular and quite macho. It feels quite tough. And I think that's all deliberate. It's all part of that Mustang ethos, isn't it? If you want something a bit more foolproof, then you're probably better off looking at something like a Porsche Boxster or a 718 Boxster. We have a few of those at Cinch. There's a lovely flat six one in there and then there's a couple of four cylinders. But when it comes to engines, a V8 Mustang Cabriolet is really where it's at, isn't it? Yeah, it's a four seater. The back seats are quite small in the back. It's much more comfortable up front. And what matters most is when you press this little button down here, That is easily one of the best sounding engines out there. And this car starts from just over 30,000 pounds on Cinch. This one here is just over 35,000 pounds, yet it sounds as exotic and as muscular as that. Yeah, I think out of our selection here, this is the one I'd be taking home just because of that engine noise. Although it was a close choice, I really do like that Jaguar as well. Which did you like? Let us know in the comments below which of our cars would you take home if the sun was out shining. And of course, if you like the video, don't forget to click the subscribe button just down below it because we have so many more videos coming up. And of course, Yanni or Yanimize has joined us for some Versus videos. So yeah, check out everything we've got coming up. See you soon.